You're watching UNICEF Television. In Washington, D.C., a historic opportunity to change the future of the world. 700 international leaders gathered to renew their commitment to ending preventable child deaths. We are all here today with one vision, to make sure every child everywhere lives to see his or her fifth birthday, to eliminate preventable child death in a generation. Now I know this is a big goal to say the least. Last year, I laid out a vision of an AIDS-free generation. Well, ending preventable child deaths is just as ambitious. Now, not everyone agrees that goals like this are achievable or that we should set our sights so high. But I believe in setting goals, and I believe we have good reasons for optimism. We already have many of the tools and much of the knowledge we need, whether it's good nutrition for expecting mothers or the best way to prevent malaria in the first few years of life. And these tools and knowledge have brought us a long way together. Child Survival Call to Action is jointly convened by the governments of the United States, India and Ethiopia. In close collaboration with UNICEF, it's looking at new ways in the next two decades to significantly reduce the numbers of children who die before they reach their fifth birthday. This new big ob objective on child survival actually bolsters our own development vision for Ethiopia. It emboldens us to aspire even higher. Today in this August gathering, I would like to assure you that India shall remain in the forefront of the global war against child mortality. India shall raise global awareness of child survival challenge and strategies, shall assist in preparing a global roadmap to end preventable child deaths in a generation. Actor and humanitarian advocate Ben Affleck said that focusing on countries like DR Congo, one of the world's poorest, would bring big gains for child survival. Congo is one of only a small handful of countries in which the number of under five mortalities has actually increased since 1990, from roughly 300,000 to over 460,000 a year. Now, how about some good news? Potential for change in the Congo is abundant. Uh, the IMF projects that the DRC will be among 10 of the world's fastest growing economies, growing at a rate of roughly 6% a year until 2015. 90% of Congo's arable land remains uncultivated. Once the breadbasket of Africa, this virtually untapped resource could return and transform the lives of millions of children. The United States was also represented by Deputy National Security Advisor Dennis McDonough. As the President laid out in his 2010 National Security Strategy, the United States has both a moral and a strategic interest in promoting global health. And this includes, obviously, preventing child death. Doing so aligns with our values, promotes economic growth, and promotes stability. Participants discussed the role of the private sector, civil society, and religious communities in reducing preventable child deaths announcing partnerships to reduce maternal mortality and to encourage religious leaders to support healthy practices for children and families. And UNICEF Executive Director Anthony Lake led the Promise Renewed Pledge, which commits signatories to work to make focused plans for child survival, monitor their results and pay greater attention to the most disadvantaged. That is why today we all, all of us, are launching Committing to Child Survival, a Promise Renewed. It is a commitment to working together to achieve the goals that we have discussed today. In high burden countries, to reduce child deaths to 20 deaths or fewer per 1,000 live births by 2035. In countries which have already achieved such levels, to sustain national progress. This is a universal issue, not one in some increasingly thin divide between so-called developing and industrial nations. And in all, to look beyond national averages to reach the children and the communities that are being left behind. 
The promised renewed pledge was signed by the representatives of the conference conveners, and Mr Lake said that UNICEF would do all it could to support its goals, particularly in closing the gaps between the disadvantaged and the most disadvantaged. This is Vivian Sue reporting. The second day of the Child Survival Call to Action Conference in Washington, D.C., focused on specific ways to lower preventable child deaths. In the keynote address, Ethiopia's Minister of Health stressed the need for local action. What I really believe, if there is country ownership, if there is ownership, if I own something, it's easier for me to commit to the something that I own. And if I commit, I know I can achieve results. But if somebody is telling me what to do and I don't own it, I don't think I would go even an inch. UNICEF Executive Director Anthony Lake described how the newly formed UN Commission on Life-Saving Commodities for Women and Children will transform the lives of the most vulnerable. The commission was formed out of frustration among all of us. Uh, not frustration, anger. Anger among all of us that millions of children and women are dying because of a lack of access to the simplest life-saving commodities. That's a moral obscenity, but it is also a tremendous practical opportunity uh, because this is a tremendous way of very cost-effectively reaching into the most disadvantaged commu uh, communities around the world. Nigeria's health minister explained how the goals of the commission are inspiring his country to do more to create equity for the disadvantaged. We've developed a scale up plan for essential commodities, focusing on pneumonia, diarrhea, and malaria. And it's a consolidation of an ongoing effort that we've been undertaking for improving community case management. I mentioned Yesterday, that we're also scaling up access to maternal and child health services using our subsidy reinvestment funds. We're expanding community health workers to rural health facilities all over our country. And they are the retail outlets for taking those commodities to where they are needed for the most vulnerable and the poorest segments of our population. UNICEF Deputy Executive Director Gita Rao Gupta encouraged delegates to work together to create a world where no mother or child dies from preventable causes. We do have an opportunity to make history here, to make preventable child deaths a thing of the past. I know it's an ambitious goal, uh, but as we heard from Minister Tedros this morning, it is attainable if we believe it is attainable, if we have the will. So the first step is to imagine a world in which no child dies needlessly from illnesses and diseases that can be prevented or treated. We have been in, united in our vision of a world in which the death of a mother or a child is the exception rather than the norm. Over the last two days, we have discussed the many ways in which it can be done. It has been exhilarating, I will say. So many nationalities, constituencies, and causes gathered under one roof over two days, to recommit to work together, to build a world that confidently expects that every mother will survive childbirth and that every child will celebrate her or his fifth birthday. I believe that this meeting has taken us forward in terms of rebuilding our confidence in each other. It has reinforced our belief that we can, we must, work together as different constituencies tracking our collective progress without losing sight of our own individual issue-specific goals. That is our call to action. Working together, each and every one, to bring about an unprecedented reduction in preventable child deaths, to renew the promise to give every child the best possible chance to survive. Ms. Gupta said that although delegates may have different causes, they could work together to achieve a better world. You've been watching UNICEF Television. For more information, go to unicef.org. Unite for Children.